Hello, uh, this is a video from Finchley College about a local coordinate system. Um, this is a question that I'm often asked, how do we create a local coordinate system when there is none given? There are two situations. There is local coordinate system for setting out and there is one for surveying. They are different. They're opposite each other, completely different. In the case of setting out, you usually have a drawing given to you. Uh, you come to the site and they give you a drawing like this and it has grid lines A, B, C, etc. on it vertically and let's say grid line 1, 2, 3 and so forth horizontally there. The dimensions are always given in millimeters so if I want to convert that dimension to meters I go 3 to the left and I'll put a dot or a decimal there for myself. So that rounded dimension is 3 meters 250 millimeters, 3 meters exact, 4 meters 200, 4 meters 700. Now to create a local coordinate system for yourself is, first of all, why do we want to create a local coordinate system? The reason for that could be is that you've given the coordinates for the grid intersection which indicate your global. There are two ways that you can find if a coordinate on a drawing is global or not. What is global, first of all? A global coordinate can be two things. It can be national coordinate, like ordnance survey coordinate, or it can be the topographic drawer's own coordinate system. They are different, but in some ways similar. The national coordinate system um, the origin is in the sea, southwest UK. And so, for example, when you go to a site and you're given this, coordinate, this drawing, you maybe have a coordinate on the drawing here, with that you can see it says Easting, for example, 52819.527. And the nosing is 19861.515. And the coordinate for grid line A is given as Easting is 528272.100 and the nosing, for example, 198699.615. So on the drawing, you've got a vertical grid, two grid intersection coordinates. And immediately you see two things. One is that the east six digits meters and three digits millimeters. The coordinate has six digits meters and three digits millimeters. This indicates an OS grid. This is an OS grid system, ordnance survey grid system. The next thing that you notice is that the easting for grid line A is not the same as easting for, for grid line A1 is different to A3. In A1, the easting is a bit more, 272, here is 196. So if you can highlight that with different color, you can see this is 196, this is 272. So what that indicates? That indicates that the, no, the axis is not parallel to the grid. Because if the axis was parallel to grid, the easings would have been the same. That means the axis is something like that. Now this is like 100,000 meters, not so close, 528,000 meters away. I'm just drawing on the board to indicate how it looks like. Because this dimension is slightly bigger than this dimension, 272 instead of 196. That indicates the axis is pointing away from the axis, the grid line. Then plus north is this direction. If this was bigger, then it would have been this way, but the axis is closer to that. So what we don't like that, we say, oh, I don't like this axis. I want my, I want to create a local coordinate system where the north is parallel to the grid. So what we do, we say, let's assume there's imaginary axis system that is parallel to this grid. 
something like that. This is minus north, this is plus north, this is plus east, this is minus east. And I'm going to assume that this grid line A is imagined, for example, 200 meters or 300 meters away from this. So I'm going to say that the grid line A has an easting of, say, 300 meters. That means the distance to the axis is 300 meters. So if the grid line A is 300 meters from this imaginary axis, then the grid line B will be 3 meters 250 more further away. So therefore, the easting for grid line B will be 303.250. Because that's 300 meters, and that's another 3 meters 250 away. The grid line C is a further 3 meters to the right, so this grid line C, the easting, will be 306.250. This is how you create a local coordinate system by imagining that there is an axis parallel to your grid line, and you can make this any number you want, 100 meters, 200 meters, 300, 700, anything you like, as long as we start usually with a nice round number. Then we say, let these horizontal grids be, for example, 500 meters, 500 meters from the axis. Therefore, the northing for grid line three Northing is 500 meters. Green line 2 is 4.2 meters further away. Therefore, green line 2 will have a northing of 504.200 northing. And green line 1 will have 4.7 away. So that will be 508.900. Another 4. 0.7 added to this, that will be the northing for these grids, and these are the easting for these grids. This means, for example, this grid intersection will have an easting of 303.250 and a northing of 504200. So in this method, we can easily create our own system by starting from the first grid, vertical grid on the left, give it a number, a value, any number, as long as it is more than zero, a lot more than zero. We don't want the origin, we don't want the axis to be anywhere near our building site. We want to be well away from it so that any point around the site and inside the site has positive easting and nosing. And that is how you create a local coordinate system for yourself, for setting out. In this situation, we were given two coordinates in global. Now we have two coordinates for them in local. The local for this is easting is 300 and the northing is 508.900. For this one, the easting is 300 and the northing is 500. So now I have two coordinates for the same point. I have a national coordinate and I have a global coordinate. We can use this in a global local coordinate spreadsheet that we can give it to you. And then what you do at this point, this is, this is at the moment what you've done, you've created your own local coordinate system, but the next phase for that is to convert the site control points to the local system because creating that on its own is not much use if you can't set them out on site. You need somehow relate this to the old system. And for this system, we have a program which we call local co, local coordinate system, and you can convert global to local or local to global. So for example, you will have a retro target on the wall or a nail on the floor and say this is retro 100 and has a coordinate in this system. We want to know what is the coordinate of this retro in this system. So we will put both in the program, point one, point two, old, new, 
old new. And when we put the old coordinate for this, it will convert and will give us the new coordinate. And that is how we create a local coordinate system because you must be able to convert from the old system to the new, otherwise the new will not be much use. So I'm going to stop now and I'm going to move on to the surveying. How do we create a local coordinate system for surveying? Just before we move that, I want to tell you why did we create a local? The reason we created a local was, for example, you had a column in here to set out. You have this column, for example, 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters, and you have a dimension. This is, for example, two meters from here, and it's two meters from here. How am I going to set out this column? I have no global coordinate for it, but I have local coordinate. I know if this core easting is 300, the easting for this will be 302 because that's two meters away. The nosing is 500. The nosing for this, so it's 302 easting, 502 nosing. So I can calculate coordinate for it in the local coordinate system for anything as long as I have dimensions from the grid line. And then I will do a resection based on the local coordinate for this and the local coordinate for my other control, which I have transferred, and then I can set this point on site. An alternative method to this one is to use AutoCAD. You can simply go to AutoCAD, open the drawing in AutoCAD, uh, and simply click on this corner and get its global coordinate. And what, now you've got global coordinate, you can do a normal resection based on the uh, global system. That is an easier method, as long as you're good with AutoCAD, because if you're not very good with AutoCAD, you become dangerous. You become mistakes, and mistakes in, in AutoCAD is easy to do. So you, you must improve your AutoCAD before you try to get coordinates and uh, do anything with it. If you're not good with AutoCAD, this is the way to create your own system, to work out coordinates for any point, and to set them out on site. The next thing we're going to go to is for surveying. So I'm going to rub these uh, from here. I'm going to start. How do we do this surveying? In surveying, when you what, what, for example, you've got a car park that they wanted to survey or a road they wanted to survey. For example, imagine that you have this car park like this and they say, can you go and survey this car park? And there is an entrance in here there will be parking bays in here there may be a gully in here and there may be a manhole in here, manhole image. There may be a lamp post in here, call it LP, something like that. And they say, can you survey this car park? And we want to know how size, what big it is, how big it is, and what's around it. So what you do, you will go, there are three ways of doing, creating a local coordinate system for surveying. In this case, because there is no drawing, therefore there is no grid lines. There's no grid line A, B, C, or one, two, three. You are asked to survey these. And you say for method one, what's the method one? Method one is the easiest of all. You can set up your total station anywhere, say here, and this point station one. So method one, uh, establish a nail on the floor, On the ground, call it station one. Give it a coordinate, easting for example 300 meters, nosing for example 800 meters, for example. 
So you've set up your instrument in here, you give it your own station coordinate, and then for example, you assume the north in this direction. This is my north. You point your instrument in that direction, and you say, this is my north. Therefore, north is when horizontal angle is zero degrees. When HZ is zero degrees, that is the north direction. And then you stick some retro target various point. For example, you stick a retro target on the lamppost, another one on the fence in here, another one in here, another one on another the lamppost in here, another retro target, so retro two. This is a retro one. You may put another one in this wall in here, retro three, another one in here, retro four. These retros are um, self adhesive um, targets that you can stick to the wall and then you simply survey these so then so then you do this and then so you first you do this then you survey the retro targets and establish their coordinates so now that you've established survey them you save them in the memory you can, when you come back the next day, or you can come back after lunch, or you can come back anytime, you will do a normal resection based on R1, R2, R3, R4. Say, for example, now you come and set up here, you do a new resection, and you continue with the survey that you, left, you were doing earlier. So this is an easy method. The problem with this method that the north direction wasn't really parallel to anything. It was roughly parallel. And rough, there's nothing wrong with it. You can put this on AutoCAD. You get a nice picture of, of the layout of the car park and everything in it, and it's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it at all. It's a very easy method. But the second method, method two, is to establish the north direction parallel to, say, a wall or a line, parallel to a wall or any line, a curb line or the fence line or anything you want. What we want to do this time, we want to make sure that these and these are parallel. These two are parallel. To make sure that this wall and this is parallel, there is a program called State Local Resection Program. Or you have Orientate to Line. What these do this is usually, for example, we use it for a Leica TS06 Plus, and this one we use for a Leica uh, TS16, TS15 or TS16. They have that program oriented to line. This one has a local resection program. And what does it do? There is a slight differences with these two program. This was a simpler local TS06 is a simpler program. What you do in here, you set up your instrument in here. You may have put a nail on the ground or not. You set up anywhere. You, you when you sight to a point, for example, you sight to a point here on this wall, and this will be the first point. The first point will have an easting of zero nosing of zero, height of zero. This will be the origin for the new local coordinate system. You side to another point along this wall, point two. Point two will establish the north direction. If I side it here, the north will be this way. If I side it here, the north will be this way. So the north direction is from point one towards point two. So north direction is from one to 
two two. Okay, point one two two. So it doesn't really matter. You don't have to sign to the corner of the wall. You don't have to sign to any particular feature as long as it's a fairly straight line. I could have cited to here for my point one, for example, here point one and here point two. Then the north would have been this direction. Or I could have cited here point one, point two. Then the north would have been this direction. It's up to you where you want to do it. But ideally, what we want to do is that the car park, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which way you do it because what we're going to do, we're going to move the origin. So after you've done the resection, the instrumental program will come back with a coordinate for the station one in relation to point one and two. It will tell you your easting, which is this. This is your easting and this is your nosing how far you are off the wall, how far you are along the wall. So in this case, for example, your easting, say it's going to be six meters, and the nosing is going to be, say, 10 meters. So it's going to say to you, at the height, for example, 1.2 meters. So it's going to tell you this point, in relation to this, six meters off the wall, 10 meters along the wall, and the height is 1.2. Then, after you've done that, you will go to step two. So that's step one. Step two, change, go to quick survey program. And change station coordinate. For example, to what? For example, easting 300 meters, nosing 600 meters, height 10 meters. So now essentially what you've done, you've moved the origin back. The origin is now, this would be 300 meters this way from the origin, and it would be 600 meters uh, this way. So the origin is moved somewhere here. You have 300 that way and 600 that way. That means any point on site when you survey is going to have positive easting and positive nosing coordinate. The oriented to line does the same thing, but it does it gives you more options. It will the point two can be zero 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 or you can give it a value straight away. So instead of doing this part, going there and changing it to whatever you want, you can change it straight away and say this point has this value. And then when you select the second point, in, in this one, local resection, that's always north. But with oriented to line program, the north can be this way, this way, this way, or this way. So it will say point one to two, is that the north? Is that the east or what is it? And you can select, I want the north to be that way or east to be that way. And that will then give you a coordinate in relation to the, this coordinate that you've set and whether this was easting or northing. The advantage for this one was that the north that direction we created was parallel exactly to a feature. For example, you could have wanted if you saw a curve line in here, there is a curve line, side to this is point one, side to this is point two, and your north is parallel to the curve line. Or it could be a face of a building across the road. You could side to a point on the wall, another point on the wall, make that the north direction. So these, pro these two programs give you flexibility to orientate your north direction to, a f to any way you want. And that way, when you plot your drawing, it will make sense that where you are and uh, which way is the north. And if two points have the same easting, then you know they are vertical. If two points have the same northing, for example, then you know it's a straight horizontal line. And that is how we create a local coordinate system for surveying. After you've done that, 
you will survey the retros R1, R2, R3, R4. You will store them as local R1, local R2, R3. And then every time you return to the site, you can use those local values for doing basic standard resection to survey your continuum view. Um, any feedback, please let me know. Um, I hope you, um, it was um, uh, what you wanted. Most people ask me, what is the local create system? How do we create system? If I go to a job, I don't have a system. How do we do it? And this is the two methods. Thank you very much.